This is the Barbados Today afternoon news for Wednesday, January 10. Thank you for joining us. I am Mary Claire Williams. The tourism industry is beginning to feel the impact of the ongoing sewage problems on the South Coast. Five British visitors who met at a South Coast hotel while spending two weeks here recently have fallen ill with what they suspect is gastroenteritis. The group's spokesperson, Joanne Collins, told Barbados Today that their holiday came to an unpleasant end after they dined with three friends at a popular South Coast restaurant. She did not present any medical evidence to support her claim of gastro, but said she and her partner have visited the island 11 times, and this was the first time they have fallen ill. Barbados Today can confirm that the restaurant is among those affected by the ongoing sewage leaks on the South Coast. The news comes as the Ministry of Health announced 35 suspected cases of gastroenteritis in the area. And one of the island's major tourist destinations, Canada, has issued a safety and security warning advising its residents to avoid the affected area. A statement from the country's public health agency said the south coast of Barbados, between Hastings and St. Lawrence areas, is experiencing an overflow of raw sewage due to a mechanical breakdown. The statement also urged visitors to avoid the affected areas and follow the instructions of local authorities. Just last month, the CEO of the Barbados Hotel and Tourism Association, Rudy Grant, reported that arrivals from Canada were up by 9.86% up to December, compared to the same period in 2016. He also predicted that the island was on track to surpass last year's record arrivals of 610,000. In other news this afternoon, a new medical facility is offering expectant mothers an alternative source of health care. MD Alliance Surgery and Birthing Center has been operating here since May last year and is set to be officially launched on Friday evening. Speaking ahead of the event, the executive director, Dr. Eltora Bennett, told a press conference that the five-bed facility offers new specialized service to its patients. Our birthing unit is one of the things that we're very proud of because it's very different. Um, a pregnant woman can have, even before the, the delivery is pending or whatever, she can have her prenatal birthing classes with us. We offer our own classes. Those are run by a qualified midwife and um, physiotherapist. And we have input from different health specialists, like nutritionists, psychologists, and the like. Okay, so that our patients come to us in labor fully prepared, they know what to expect. We think that that makes the birthing process a lot easier <laughs> to tolerate or to get through. Um, the patient who's admitted in labor has the benefit of being assigned a room and assigned a midwife. And we try as far as it's possible to keep that midwife with the patient so that you don't have different midwives with you throughout the process. You don't have different doctors examining nothing like that. Dr. Bennett told the news conference the new facility also seeks to offer services that are on par with international healthcare providers. I think that you will realize that my colleagues largely feel that we have capabilities that go unrecognized because we don't have the structures and the equipment very often to allow us to optimize our skills. So I think many of us felt that we needed to move out and try to do something where we could really bring, you know, the sort of optimum uh, service to our clients and our patients. In addition to that, you will find, and I'm sure if you check with the insurance companies in particular, they will tell you that a significant amount of Barbadians go overseas to seek medical care and attention, okay. and we certainly hope to reduce that need for people to go overseas. The Barbados Union of Teachers has given the Ministry of Education top marks for ensuring that all schools were ready for the start of the new school term yesterday. BUT President Pedro Shepard told Barbados today there were hardly any complaints when classes resumed. This was an improvement over last term when the reopening of five schools was delayed because of unfinished repairs. We left last term with the understanding that some work would have been done to the St. Mark's primary during the Christmas holiday. That work was done. Yesterday, teachers 
obviously turned up for work and they still had residuals in terms of dust and so on. So we made contact with the ministry yesterday, the sent cleaners last night. I am now awaiting word from the staff at the school to see if everything is a go. I have not had any complaints thus far this morning. So I trust that the cleaning is uh, one satisfactory to the third at St. Mark's and they are ready to go. We had issues at the end of last term again with St. Lawrence. Right. Now that is on the south coast, so they were having issues with um, the sewage one, and then they were having issues with some other overflow because you know they are between the sea and the swamp. Between the sea and the swamp, then you have the sewage problem. So they were having some issues. They were able to get the ministry to go in there and do some work as well. They are continuing both the Ministry of Education and Ministry of Health to monitor that situation. So for us at the Beauty, we we can say that this term has started relatively smoothly uh, in terms of reopening of schools and we would hope that during the course of this year that as issues arise, our membership will bring them to our attention and we will be able to speak to the ministry and have some resolution because going in, coming into the end of last year, we have, start, we have started to build on a relationship with the ministry where we are now in a better position to communicate with the PS and other officers of the ministry. Mm -hmm. There's regional and international news after this short break. Barbados Today, news you can trust. Thank you for staying with us. We're back with news from the region. A 7.6 magnitude earthquake struck the Caribbean late last night between the coast of Honduras and the Cayman Islands. It was one of the strongest quakes to hit the region in recent times. It was felt across northern and central America. And this prompted the U.S. Tsunami Warning Center to issue an alert of possible tsunami waves within 621 miles of the epicenter. These included the coastal areas of Jamaica, Mexico, Cuba, Belize, Costa Rica, Panama, the Cayman Islands, Honduras, Nicaragua, Guatemala, Puerto Rico, and the Virgin Islands. The U.S. Geological Survey said the quake was very shallow and this would have amplified the effect of a tsunami. The tsunami center later canceled the alert but warned that some parts of Honduras and Belize remained at risk from waves of up to a meter. And finally, on the international scene, prosecutors in Myanmar today sought charges against two Reuters reporters under the country's Official Secrets Act following their arrest last month. They had worked on Reuters' coverage of a crisis in the western state of Rakhine, and the United Nations estimates that over 600,000 Rohingya Muslims have fled from a fierce military crackdown in the area. Journalists say they now face up to 14 years in jail. We get more in this report from Reuters. Almost a month since their arrest in Myanmar, two Reuters journalists accused of breaching the country's Official Secrets Act appeared at a Yangon court on Wednesday where prosecutors sought charges against them under a law which carries a maximum prison sentence of 14 years. Walon and Choi Soo were arrested nearly a month ago after they were invited to meet police officers over dinner. They'd been covering a crisis in the western state of Rakhine, which has seen more than half a million Rohingya Muslims flee a fierce military crackdown. Calls for the journalists' release have been growing. On Tuesday, former US President Bill Clinton urged they be freed immediately, saying a free press is critical to a free society. While after the hearing on Wednesday, Reuters editor-in-chief Steve Adler said, we are extremely disappointed that the authorities seek to prosecute them. We view this as a wholly unwarranted, blatant attack on press freedom. That's news this afternoon. Remember, you can get more on our website, www.barbadostoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook. 
We are on Izumi Media in bus terminals and on screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also find us on Mix 96.9 FM. I am Marikina Williams. Have a good afternoon.